Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The topic of the lesson of today's lesson is equilibria in solution, which concerns also acids and bases. Well, uh, the first definition which was given of acid and bases was given by Svante Arrhenius, a Dutch chemist of the past centuries. And uh, According to Arrhenius, an acid is a compound which has formula HX that dissociates it according to the, rea the reaction HX, which gives H plus plus X minus. Uh, with the, the expression H plus, is considered the hydroxonium ion. First of all, I would like to tell you that hydroxonium ion in solution is surrounded by a number which is, cannot be exactly known of water molecules that surround him, that surround it. And when you say H plus in aqueous solution, it means H3O plus H5O2 plus H7O3 plus and so on. Just to say that the hydroxonium ion in aqueous solution, it's impossible that exists. The reason is that the hydrogen is the smallest atom that is present in the atomic tables of the elements. And it has only one proton and only one electron. The dimension of an atom uh, depends on the dimension of its outer orbital. Hydrogen has only one electron located in the one Hess orbital. If you bring away this electron, this, uh, this one Hess orbital will be completely empty. So the dimension of the H plus one, H plus one hydrogen ion will be very, very, very small. This is the reason why a high positive density of charge, a high positive superficial density of charge over the surface of the hydrogen ion is created. And this very high, um, density of positive charge uh, along the surface of the hydroxonium ion is saturated by the as high as possible water more number of water molecules. Then H the X minus one, it means that this is an anion that is created by the dissociation of the HX acid. It may be a simple anion such as chloride, such as bromide, such as fulfide, and so on. Or it also may be an oxygenated anion such as uh, SO4 minus 2, such as uh, COL3 minus 1, and so on. So always according to the definition that Arrhenius have given of acid and bases, a base is a compound which has a formula MOH, which dissociates according to the reaction MOH aqueous, which dissociated into M mm, plus 1 and hydroxyl ion OH minus 1. M, in this case, it represents an metal ele element, namely it may be an alkaline metals such as lithium, sodium, potassium and so on. It may be an alkaline earth metal such as magnesium or calcium or strontium or barium and so on. Or it may also be a transitional metal ion such as uh, iron, such as, uh, such as uh, chromium, such as um, zinc and so on. Well, uh, it is well known that uh, a strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte do exist. And uh, among the electrolyte, there are acid and base. So 
The same difference that exists between strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes exists between weak acid and strong acid and weak base and a strong base. As an example, uh, the strong acid um, undergoes the dissociation reaction completely. Namely, when the acid HX reacts with water, this giving pressure to hydroxonium ion H3O plus and to the anion X minus one. These two ions, the hydroxonium and X1 minus, cannot react again among between themselves to give back the HX acid and the water. So if the acid is strong acid, this reaction will go to completion and it will be denoted by only one arrow going from left to right. Whereas, as far as weak acids are concerned, the dissociation of the weak acid HX is a, only a partial dissociation. Namely, the HX acid reacts with a water molecule it gives one proton to H2O, thus obtaining the hydroxonium ion H3O+, and also obtaining the, the base um, X-1. minus When the hydroxonium ion and the base X-1 minus are formed, they can begin to react between each other to give back again the undissociated acid HX and water. This fact is denoted by the double arrow, which means that the reaction can uh, go uh, from left to right the direct direction and to right to left the reverse direction. It must be highlighted that water, H2O, is contemporaneously the solvent and the reagent. This is a very important fact because the concentration of water is far higher than the concentration of whatever other piece present in solution. And this is the reason why when we write the mass action law for this equilibrium arising from the fact that HX is a weak acid, the concentration of water disappear from the mass action law. And we will see immediately how. As an example, if we take quite a concentrated solution, namely a solution 0.1 molar of the weak acid HX, uh, Initially, the before the dissociation begins, the concentration of the acid HX is 0.1 molar. If we calculate the concentration of water in this solution, we can consider that in a liter of solution, there is about one kilogram of water. One kilogram of water corresponds to 1,000 grams divided by the molecular weight of water, which is 18, it corresponds to 55.5 moles that are present in a liter of solution. So the concentration of water in all this solution is about 55.5 <coughs> moles per liter. When the because of the reaction of the solution of dissociation of the weak acid HX, it changed the concentration of HX. It will change a little bit also the concentration of the water. But if the concentration of the acid, acid HX, for example, halves, it becomes from 0.1 to 0.05, also the concentration of water will change of 0.05 and it will become from 55.55 moles per liter, it will become 55.50. So it will change 
of an amount that can be very easily neglected because it is very, very, very small. This is the reason why when we write the mass action law for the equilibrium of dissociation of weak acid or a weak base, we will have that the concentration of water will disappear from the mass action law. Look, the mass action law should be written like this. But being the concentration of water practically constant, the concentration of water is encompassed into the value of the equilibrium constant. And so the max action law for the dissociation of the weak acid Hx takes this form in which it is written here. Okay? Well, the same consideration may be done for bases. Here there is the dissociation recession of a strong base, namely MOH in aqueous solution gives rise to M plus ion and to hydroxyl ion and this reaction goes to completion and the completion of this reaction is denoted by the fact that in this reaction only one arrow going from left to right is reported. Whereas in weak bases, the reaction, the fact that the reaction does not go to completion and it is an equilibrium reaction is denoted by the fact that in this reaction is reported a double arrow, just to mean that when the weak base MOH undergoes dissociation, thus giving rise to M plus and hydroxyl anion, M plus ion and hydroxyl anion can react between each other to give back the undissociated weak base MOH. According to this definition of Arrhenius, the very well known acidity of compounds such as carbon dioxide or the basicity of compound of such as NH3 ammonia uh, it not, is not explained because the, uh, the, um, the, the pristine uh, definition of acid and base given by Arrhenius, it is that an acid is a compound with formula HX. A base is a compound with formula MOH and CO2 is different from HX and NH3 is different from MOH. Well, at the first time it was explained the acid properties of carbon dioxide and the basic properties of ammonia, considering that when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, it gives rise to the acid of, to a supposed carbonic acid H2CO3 and ammonia reacts with water, thus giving rise to ammonium hydroxide. But it appears as if we have to force the reality when saying it, because nobody has isolated the carbonic acid H2CO3 and ammonium hydroxide NH4OH. What but the Arrhenius definition of acid and base can be uh, considered valid if we uh, slightly modify it by considering that water is slightly self-dissociated according to this reaction. Look at this. We had that one molecule of water may react with another molecule of water and a molecule of water brings away an hydrogen ion from the other water molecule, thus giving rise to an hydroxonium ion. Whereas the other molecule to which an hydrogen ion was taken away transforms into an hydroxyl ion. You know, the self dissociation of water is proved by the small but uh, finite existing conducibility of, of uh, 
uh, distilled water. The fact that the distilled water slightly but is able to carry the electric current, it means that in distilled water there must be a small but existing concentration or electrical charge able to bring the electrical current. And the only electrical charge that are possible to exist in perfectly distilled water are the ion HO3 hydroxonium ion and the hydroxyl ion HO uh, minus one. Well, at 25 degrees Celsius, we have that the concentration of hydroxonium ion is equal to the concentration of hydroxyl ion is perfectly equal to 1 per 10 at minus 7 moles per liter. So we can say that the neutrality of an aqueous solution is perfectly only when the concentration of hydroxonium ion is equal to the concentration of hydroxyl ion and both are equal to 1 per 10 at minus 7 moles per liter. It must be said that the um, self-dissociation of water is an, a slightly endothermic reaction. This is the reason why what it is written here is perfectly true only at the temperature on 25 degrees Celsius. A temperature higher than 25 degrees Celsius, this concentration will be a little bit higher namely it will be 1.1 at 10 at minus 7, 1.3 at 10 at minus 7, and so on. Whereas at temperatures lower than 25 degrees, this equilibrium concentration will be slightly lower than 1 per 10 at minus 7, so it will be 0 0.9, 0 0.8 per 10 at minus 7 moles per liter. Well, uh, neglecting this small variation of the concentration of hydroxonium and hydroxyl ion uh, with temperature, we can say that uh, the perfect neutrality of a aqueous solution occurs when the, the concentration of the hydroxonium ion is equal to the concentration of hydroxyl ion and both are equal to uh, 1 per 10 at minus 7 moles per liter. Well, the max action law may be written also for the equilibrium of self-dissociation of water and it's written in this way. Obviously also in this uh, uh, max action law which is referred to the self-dissociation of water. Also in this reaction, the concentration of water disappears because also in this reaction, the concentration of water will be 55.5 moles per liter, whereas the concentration of this older chemical species when the equilibrium is attained is about 1 per 10 est minus 7. So the concentration of water will be of many order of the magnitude larger than the concentration of this other chemical species, so it be considered practically constant. And so it disappears from the mass action law. Bearing in mind the self-dissociation of water, it can be said, one may say that An acid is a substance which increases the H3O concentration in solution, namely is able to increase the hydroxonium ion concentration in solution, whereas a base is a substance that increases the hydroxyl ion concentration in solution. Well, so the um, definition that the reviews gave of acid and base is very, very simple, but was not very complete. With, by considering the reaction of self-dissociation of water 
and by uh, adding this um, small, uh, this small uh, correction to the definition of acid and base, we can say that the definition of Arrhenius can become also quite complete. <coughs> but now, today, the most known, the most accepted definition of acid and base was given by two scientists, the English Lowry and the Danish Brunsted, which who gave this definition of acid and base independently from each other, almost contemporaneously to each other, the one not knowing what was doing the other. So this, this definition of acid and base was attributed to both these scientists, the English Lowry and the Dennis Brunsted. According to Lowry Brunsted, an acid is a substance that gives protons in solution, and a base is a substance that accepts protons in solution. In this way, whatever compound has formula Hx is an acid, and whatever compound, um, whatever compound of formula MOH is a base, as when, o, when uh, as every compound which exhibit formula MOH is a ionic compound. A ionic compound is completely dissociated into solution, and uh, uh, the OH species uh, is able to accept proton from water, and so it um, accepts proton from water, and so it is confirmed the definition that the Lewy Brunstad gave of this base. So, uh, the, um, according to the definition of Lewy Brunstad, we have that. The dissociation of a acid or a base into solution may be considered as a acid-base reaction. Look at this. We have the HX acid, which is dissolved in water, thus giving rise to hydroxonium ion and to the base X1 minus 1. Well, the reaction occurred between the acid HX and the base water. The base water accepts a proton from the acid HX, which gives the proton, and the base, H, the base water transforms into the hydroxonium ion, and the acid HX transforms into its conjugated base, which is X minus 1. So the couple acid HX conjugated base at X minus 1 forms a acid base couple. Okay? And the conjugated bases corresponding to the acid HX is X1. And uh, you know, the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid lies into the difference of the conjugated bases. When the, base, the acid HX is a strong acid, it means that the conjugated bases is a weak base, which is not able to keep for itself the hydroxonium minus H1. And so the dissociation reaction goes to complexion. Whereas when the acid HX is a weak acid, it means that the conjugated base X minus 1 is a strong base, which, is, uh, which gives with difficulty the proton. And so it keeps for itself a part or a large part of the proton, thus giving rise to the limited amount of hydroxonium ion in solution. We have here also the dissociation reaction of a base, and also the dissociation reaction of a base may be seen 
as an acid-base reaction, as when ammonia is dissolved into water, ammonia reacts with water, water brings, uh, uh, ammonia is able to bring away uh, protons from water, thus transforming itself in the ammonium ion H and H4 plus 1. The water molecule to which an hydrogen ion was taken away transforms into an hydroxyl ion HOH minus 1. So the base will be ammonia and ammonium ion NH4 plus will be the conjugated acid conjugated to the base NH3. Look at this uh, very, very important fact. Water, when is put together to have more acidic substance such as the acid HX behaves as a base because it's able to accept a proton given by the acid HX. Whereas, when it's put in contact with a more basic substance such as ammonia, it behaves like an acid because it is able to give one proton. A substance that in, uh, when put together with more acetic substances behaves as a base and when put in contact with uh, more basic substances we say behave like an acid is said an amphoteric substances. So water is a typical amphoteric substance. I repeat, amphoteric means that when it is put in contact, when it is put together with an acid, it behaves like a base. When it is put in contact with a base, it behaves like an acid. Well, um, <clears throat> It is possible to see that compounds such as sodium oxide on sodium sulfide are strong bases because when they, they are ionic compounds, when they are put in solution with water, they undergo complete dissociation, the, the sodium oxide into sodium ion and oxide ion and the sodium sulfide into sodium ion and sulfide ion. Well, oxide, oxide ion O minus T may react with water, thus giving rise to hydroxyl ion, more one hydroxyl ion. Look at this, O H O, excuse me, minus two, brings away one electron from a water molecule and it transforms into an hydroxyl ion. The water molecule with, to which was br brought away one hydrogen atom transforms into another hydroxyl ion. So the strong basic character of the alkaline oxide is demonstrated by this reaction. Also sodium sulfide is a strong base as sodium sulfide undergoes complete reaction, as complete dissociation as it is um, a ionic compound into sodium ion and into sulfide ion but sulfide ion may react with water and the sulfide ion S minus T is able to bring away one hydroxonium hydrogen ion from a motor molecule and it transforms into the ion HS minus one and water molecule to which 
an hydrogen ion was brought away, transforms into an hydroxyl ion, okay? So by this reaction, the strong basic character of sulfido alkaline metal and oxino alkaline metal is easily demonstrated. It must also be said that all, all the solutes uh, <coughs> that are uh, more acidic in a more, are more all, all the solutes are more acidic in a more basic solvent, whereas all the solutes are more basic in a more acidic solvent. What does it mean? Let's take another solvent different from water, for example, ammonia. Also ammonia undergoes the self-dissociation reaction namely two molecules of ammonia reacts with each other and one molecule of ammonia is able to bring away at least in part an hydrogen ion to another molecule of ammonia thus transforming the ammonia molecule into the ammonium ion NH4 plus one. The molecule of ammonia to which an hydrogen ion was brought away transforms into the anion NH2 minus, okay? So if we dissolve an acid in this solvent, it will increase the concentration of NH4 plus one ammonium ion, and it will decrease the concentration of the ion NH2 minus one. Whereas if we take another solvent more acidic than water, for example, the acetic acid, CH3, COOH. Well, these two molecules of acetic acid may react with each other, and one molecule of, of acetic acid is able to bring away an hydrogen ion from another molecule of acetic acid, thus transforming into this cation CH3, COH, COH plus. Whereas the molecule to which the hydrogen ion was brought away transforms into the anion CH3, COO minus. And if you dissolve an acid into this solvent, the concentration of the acid, the CH3, C COH, COH will increase and the, and the concentration of the anion CH3, COO minus one will decrease. Well, the character of the solvent is important to decide the what kind of acid or what kind of basis will, we will have. As an example, all the acid will be more acidic if the solvent is more basic than water and will be less acidic if the solvent is more acidic than water. As an example, a lot of acid are strong acid when dissolved in ammonia instead of water. And also, also some of the strong acid, if dissolved in acetic acid, will behave as a weak acid and not as a strong acid. In practice, there is a, a sort of, uh, of list of the strength of the acid that are listed in, uh, in the order of decreasing acidity. There are only a few acid that, are, that uh, undergo in water complete dissociation and they are considered strong acid. Now I don't know if I remember all of them. One surely is the perchloric acid, HCl4. Surely there is the sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Surely is the, chlorhydric, the hydrochloric acid, HCl. 
surely there is the chloric acid HClO3. And it's not very large in the number of strong acids that undergo complete dissociation. This number of acid would be lower if, as a solvent, you, not use, you do not use water and use a more acidic solvent such as acetic, oxa acetic acid. But if you use acetic acid as the solvent, you may differentiate, you may appreciate the difference of acidity strength in the various acids that are stronger than water, stronger than, than, stronger, stronger than H3O as acid. For example, if you dissolve the strong acid in water, the strong acid in water HClO4, HClO3, HCl, H2SO4, and so on, will be all perfectly equal because they all will undergo, will totally undergo the self, the dissociation reaction. If you take a solvent more acidic than water, it will not occur. As an example, perchloric acid will keep on completely dissociating even in acetic acid. The other, the other strong acid will not do this. Thus assuring us, thus certifying us that perchloric acid is an acid stronger than all the other, all the other, all the other acid that you have been reported, okay? Finally, it must be said that to give a measurement of the acidity or the basidic of a solution is defined a parameter, a quantity which said pH. The pH is defined as the opposite of the logarithm in base 10 of the hydroxonium ion concentration. Well, as an example, in a neutral solution at the temperature of 25 degrees, the hydroxonium concentration is 1 per 10 at minus 7. So the opposite of the logarithm, 1 per 10 at minus 7, will be exactly 7. Okay? And uh, uh, this is quite important because uh, the uh, the, um, the measurement of the acidity or the basicity of a solution will be done by often using this parameter. Obviously, the pH and the pOH, namely the opposite of the logarithm base 10 of hydroxonium ion concentration, the sum will have to give 14. Okay? It also must be said that the pH is a function that varies from minus infinite to plus infinite because uh, there are only, must be considered, the limit of solubility of the various chemical species into water. But it must be said, it must be strongly highlighted the fact that we can have a solution with negative pH and we can have a solution with uh, pH higher than 14. The only the meaning of this value of pH is that when the pH is lower is negative, it means that the concentration of H of the hydroxonium ion in solution is higher than one molar because concentration of hydroxonium ion one molar 
gives rise to zero pH. But in, uh, if, you, if we take some more concentrated than one mole per liter solution of a strong ac acid, it will give rise to hydroxonium concentration in solution that will be higher than one mole per liter. And so it will give rise to negative value of pH. In the same way, if we consider an, a solution of sodium hydroxide more than one molar, we will obtain a concentration of hydroxonium ion in solution, which will be higher than one molar, and it will give rise to concentration of hydroxonium ion, which is lower than zero, which will be negative, and thus to uh, pH to hydroxonium ion concentration, which will be lower than one at minus 14. So this is the reason why we can have pH value which are negative and also pH value that are higher than 14. What does it mean if this case occurs? If the pH attains lower that are negative, it will only mean that the hydroxonium concentration in solution will be then will be higher than one mole per liter. And concentration of hydroxyl ion that are higher than one mole per liter will give rise to pH value which will be higher than 40. Just that, okay? Finally, there is another definition of acid and base a base which was given by Lewis. According to Lewis, an acid is whatever species is able to accept an unpaired couple of electrons, and a base is whatever species able to share an unpaired couple of electrons. Well, to well understand the Lewis, the Lewis definition of acid and base, we should have a look to the formation of a dative bond, which we have already seen. Wait for a moment. Look at this. When I told you about the dative bond, I made the example of fluorum of boron trifluoride, which being this one the electron structure of boron, being this one the electron structure of fluorine, we have that the boron trifluoride uh, is uh, uh, obtained by sharing a couple of electrons between boron atom and between this fluoride, fluorine atom, by sharing another couple of electrons by this fluorine atom and this boron atom, and by sharing another couple of electrons between this fluorine atom and this boron atom. As you can see, boron has here an orbital, an atomic orbital, where there is no electron, so it has an electron hole. Then we built the electronic structure of ammonia, and we saw that ammonia exhibit an unpaired electron doublet here, because being this one the electron structure of nitrogen, so being this one the electronic symbol of nitrogen, we have that hydrogen put its elect one electron here, thus sharing this couple of electrons. Put another electron here, thus sharing this couple of electrons. Put another electron here, thus sharing this another couple of electrons. And so we have the molecule of ammonia, which exhibits an unpaired electron doublet. 
I told you that the dative bond was formed by ammonia and boron trifluoride molecules because the ammonia molecule put its unpaired electron doublet, this one, into the electron hole of boron trifluoride, this one. So the formation of a dative bond may be taken as an acid-base reaction, where the boron trifluoride, which has the electron hole, is the acid, and the ammonia, which acts with the unpaired electron doublet, is the base. Okay? You know, this definition uh, given by Lewis of acid and base is very, is very useful in organic chemistry because a lot of organic reaction may be interpreted as a sort of acid-base reaction, acid reaction because there are molecules in which there are atoms which exhibit unpaired electron doublet which put their electron doublet into the electron hole of other molecules which exhibit electron hole, okay? So, coming back to the various definition of uh, acid and base which were given by Arrhenius, by Leuven Brunstad, and by Lewis, it may be said that the simplest one is the one given by Arrhenius. The one by Arrhenius with the, the small modification arising from the fact that the self-dissociation of water or self-dissociation of the solvent is considered is a very easy definition of acid and base, and it is also quite a complete definition. Well, then there is the definition that was given by Leuven Brunstad of acid and base, which is quite clear, which is quite complete, and, and also have a valuable, very valuable fact. The fact that the use of definition of given by Leuven Brunstad of acid and base allowed to uh, consider acid and base also in solvent other than water. You know, the definition given by Arrhenius of acid and base was only referred to water as solvent, whereas definition given by Leuven Brunstad of acid and base referred to whatever solvent. and the use of solvent other than water allow to uh, evaluate the different strength of the various strong acid and the different strength of the various strong bases. Finally, the definition which was of acid and base which was given by Lewis had the large advantage of his universality. Because many, many reactions with, at a first sight, do not appear acid-base reaction, mainly in organic chemistry, may be considered acid-base reaction if the definition given by Lewis of acid and of base is taken, is taken as valid, okay?
Well, to complete the chapter of Hesed and Dese, it must be considered the fact that the dissolution of a salt in a solvent such as water may or may not give rise to variation in the pH of the solution. And we should see why the pH of the solution changes. In practice, the dissolution of salt in water may remain unaltered the pH of the solution, but may also turn it to acidic or basic solution. An uh, example of dissolution of a salt that remains the pH of the, sol of the resulting solution unaltered is the dissolution of sodium chloride. In, as an example, sodium chloride undergoes the dissociation reaction into sodium ion H plus 1 and chlorine minus 1, and nothing more occurs other than this dissociation. But if we take a compound which is not very different from sodium chloride, such as sodium fluoride, NaF, we have that the dissolution of this compound will turn into basic the resulting solution. Let's see why. We have that the sodium fluoride, NaF, dissociates, completely dissociated, incompletely dissociate into sodium ion Na plus 1 plus F minus 1, okay? But half minus one may react with water according to this reaction. F minus one reacts with water and brings away an electron from water. And it transforms into the undissociated HF acid. And the water molecules to which a proton was brought away turns into an hydroxyl ion. So this reaction, uh, labeled with one, gives rise to a rise into the concentration of hydrolysis of a, a hydroxyl ion. So the mass action law of this equilibrium reaction may be written as Ki, namely, equilibrium constant of hydrolysis. Uh, uh, this reaction is called hydrolysis reaction, is equal to the concentration of product of reaction, each one elevated to the uh, stoichio its stoichiometric coefficient, to divided by the concentration of uh, the reactant, each one divided each one elevated at its own uh, coefficient, uh, stoichiometric coefficient. So there will be the concentration of undissociated hydrofluoric acid, which will appear with coefficient 1, because the stoichiometric coefficient 1 is found in this reaction. And we will also find the hydroxyl ion concentration always elevated at the, the first at the, the at exponent one because it corresponds to its stoichiometric coefficient one. At the denominator we will find the concentration of F minus one fluoride ion fluoride ion uh, fluoride ion concentration um, and uh, also in this reaction, the concentration of water will disappear as the concentration of water will be far higher than the concentration of whatever other species present in the solution because water is contemporaneously one of the reactant and contemporaneously one of uh, the solvent. So its concentration is far higher than the one of everyone else reactant or product of reaction.
But the action one may be written in this way. Wait for a moment. We can write this reaction, F minus one, which reacts with hydroxonium anion H3O plus, which is in equilibrium with the undissociated hydrofluoric acid HF plus water H2O. And we can write also the self-dissociation reaction of water H2O plus H2O one molecule of water brings away one hydroxonium ion to another molecule of water. So this molecule of water turns into the hydroxonium ion and the other molecule to which the hydroxonium ion was taken away turns into an hydroxyl ion. Well, these reactions are denoted with three, the first one, and four, the second one. These two reactions may be summed member to member, and we obtain reaction, this reaction, F minus 1, F minus 1, H3O plus, H3O plus, H2O, H2O, 2H2O. Then there is the double arrow, and we have that HF and H, HF. H2O, H2O, H3O plus, H3O plus, HO minus 1, HO minus 1. So we have that H2O disappears with these two, H3O disappears with H3O, and we can write, we can write this mass action law, always considering that from the max section law, the from the mass section law, the concentration of water disappear because the concentration of water is practically constant. So we have that we have to report in the max section law the concentration of product of reaction, each one elevated at its own stoichiometric coefficient, namely concentration of hydrofluoric acid elevated at, the f at one as exponent, concentration of hydroxyl ion elevated as one as exponent, divided by concentration of F minus one elevated at one as exponent, which is its, its own stoichiometric coefficient. But and also we can obtain this expression by multiplying member to member the expression five and the expression six that are reported here. The expression five and the expression six reported here and nothing else that the mass action law of equilibrium three and the mass action law of equilibrium four. As an example, here we have at numerator the concentration of undissociated hydrofluoric acid, at the denominator the concentration of fluoride ion multiplied by the concentration of hydroxonium ion, and the equilibrium constant of the reaction is the reverse of the acetic constant of hydrofluoric acid. And it is obvious because the reaction is the reverse reaction of the dissociation of hydrofluoric acid. So being the reverse reaction of the dissociation reaction, it will have as an equilibrium constant the reverse of the value of the dissociation constant of the acid HF. Then the reaction labeled with four is nothing else than the equilibrium of self-dissociation of water and the mass action law may be written like this, 
by multiplying member to member, member expression 5 to expression 6, we obtain concentration of hydrofluoric acid undissociated. Concentration of hydroxonium ion multiplied by concentration of hydroxyl ion divided by concentration of fluoride ion multiplied by concentration of hydroxonium ion. Concentration of hydroxonium ion is simplified with concentration with hydroxonium ion. And so there will appear only that the product a concentration of hydrofluoric acid multiplied by concentration of hydroxyl ion divided by concentration of fluoride ion is equal to the product of the second member of equation 5 and equation 6. And the um, product of the second member will be uh, Kw, namely the ionic product of water, divided by the constant of dissociation of the water, Cape E. But if we write the mass action law from this reaction, we obtain this form of the mass action law. Being k high equal to this fraction. This fraction is equal to the ratio kW divided by ka. We can say that the hydrolysis constant of this reaction is equal to the ratio of ionic product of water kW to a const acidic constant of of acid HF, okay? This is the, this will be the value of uh, the hydrolysis constant. The example I have just done, it's an example which tell us that by dissolving an a salt such as sodium fluoride, the pH that gives to its solution, it will be an basic pH. And the reason is that, that uh, the F minus one is the conjugated base of fluoridic, hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, which means that hydro, uh, fluoride ion will, will be uh, a strong conjugated base and it will strongly interact with water to bring away hydroxonium ion from water and thus transforming the water into HO minus one. This is the reason why the system behaves in this way. There are also salt that dissolved in water gives to the water an acidic, an acidic uh, character. As an example, if we take and salt the ammonium chloride NH4Cl, when they are put into solution, they completely dissociate into the ion that form that compose him, namely in ammonium ion HNH4 plus one plus chloride ion Cl1.
but we have that chloride ion do not undergo any reaction with water because chloride ion is the conjugated base of hydrochloric acid which is a strong acid so being hydrochloric acid a strong acid its conjugated base chloride ion cl minus one will be a, a strong which will be a weak base and will not be able to bring away an electron for the